Hey everybody, welcome to the Cardboard Cave here for a, can you believe it? A Super 7 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle unboxing and review. Um, it's been a little while now. Um, I've done some NECA figures recently, some other turtle toys, because um, I'm obsessed with turtle toys. But it's been a while since I've done a Super 7 um, video. And even longer for me, because I recorded a lot of those way ahead of time. And I said in the last video, unless they come out with one I'm super excited about, that I pretty much had the ones that I wanted. You know, I had the core turtles. We'll go back and watch the videos. I got my favorite villains and the core turtles and um, a couple of quirky ones too, but mostly, you know, why I consider some of the, the core gang, you know. But they've come out with some quirky ones that definitely spoke to me. And the one we're gonna be reviewing today I was surprised it arrived first. It's a uh, Punk Rocker Don. Sorry, just Punker Don. I'll get it right. Uh, Classic Rock Leo I uh, ordered before, and I thought Don wasn't going to ship right away, but I actually got Don first. He's very new. Um, I mean, I'm sure some people got him early, but he's, uh, he's a pretty new release. Um, Classic Rocker Leo is like maybe three months old, something like that, whereas Don is pretty much brand new. And then there's rapper Mike, who is also, I would say, in this series, if you want to call it that. Um, I don't know if anybody has him yet. I think officially he releases like end of December or something like that. There's no word yet if we're going to get the Raphael figure. That would be a shame if not. If you know anything, please leave a comment below. I heard some people say that Playmates has told Super 7 that they need to stop making figures so directly based on Playmates figures from the past. I don't know if that's true or not. If you know anything, please comment below because they've been doing that. All of my Super 7 figures, every single one of them, all my Turtle ones are based on Playmates figures. Every single one of them. Um, now, they're way blown up, way more detail, way more everything, um, but they're definitely based on the Playmates figures. So that's an interesting thought if they've really asked, if Playmates really asked Super 7 to stop doing that. If so, that's poor timing because I'm excited about this line to have the four turtles in their band get-ups, basically. Um, if that's true, Raphael may not happen, or if he does, he isn't going to look like the Playmates one, if that's true. But anyways, we definitely have Punker Don, Classic Rock Leo, and Rapper Mike is supposed to be coming very soon. Um, they are all based on Playmates figures, but of course, ultimized, ulti ultimatized. Anyways, this is exactly how mine came. Um, I didn't know if it'd have the slip cover or not because I've apparently they've stopped doing that. But um, I guess these are still considered like um, part of the older series. So they're trying to be consistent and still keep doing it. But I guess like the play, what I would call the Playmates era Turtles figures from Super 7. Now, like I know they've got some figures based on newer Turtles series that I know a lot of people are excited about. Um, and those I don't think are gonna have the slip covers. But since this is still technically based on the same Playmates line of figures that all of my Super 7 figures are, I guess they're gonna keep with the slip covers, which is nice, because I take mine out of the box, so it's not a huge deal, but I do like this. So there's Punker Dawn, the sewer lid, Punker Dawn. Not gonna spend a ton of time on the box, but as always, the Super 7 boxes are great. <clears throat> so you see right away, just great colors, very fun details, three heads. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think, just based on what I see here, Punker Don may win the award of all the Super 7 figures I have for the most number of truly different heads. Like, he's got three heads, and they're all very different. Most of them only have, like, two heads. I think some, well, some of them only have one, you know, like Bebop and Rocksteady and obviously the huge figures. But even some of the ones that have two or even three usually don't have three that are this varied. So, yeah, that's awesome. The Kitar obviously is awesome. He's got a bow staff that I believe is a, 
I don't, some kind of a, not a clarinet. I'm not, I'm not really real up to date on musical instruments. Um, a very long flute like instrument. Oboe. I don't know what it is. Is oboe? That's not even an instrument. Microphone stand, microphone. But yeah. Perkadon, the pierced punker of kicking keyboards. And I'm not going to bore you, but I will let you pause that and read it if you would like to. Okay. So we're going to, you know, one seal on the top, one seal on the bottom, usual Super 7 fashion. We'll give you one more good look here. And then we're going to come back and take them out of the package. <laughs> Some crazy heads there. <clears throat> Super, Seven, Super Seven figures are always easy to take out of the package. A couple of zip ties, not a whole lot. They're made so you can put them back in the package and display them that way if you want to, pretty easily. All right, so let's get into it. We'll catch you in just a couple of moments. All right, we've just opened the seal and popped the top on Punker Don here. So let's take them on out. All right, so there we have our empty box. <clears throat> and two trays, a little bit of tape here. Tape on both sides, but we don't really need to remove the other side. Uh, have we, Bill? Let's do it. All right. So, on the bottom tray, we have his, I wouldn't call it a clarinet and bow staff, but those of you who actually have musical talent or know musical instruments, let me know. A vinyl record, which is pretty sweet. A tuning fork, which is nice. A chain. Huh. Um, he has a strap for his keytar, so I'm trying to figure out if the chain is just like a weapon. Looks like a lock on the end. We'll take a closer look at all those, but just showing you in the package what you got here. Your three heads, including the one on them, obviously. Which we'll take a closer look at all those, of course. Um, he's wearing a necklace here on a metal chain, which is sweet. Keytar is just fantastic. And you see it already has a strap on it. It's like a purple spiky rubber strap. Um, microphone stand. And a slew of hands. Um, and of course the microphone itself. So some pretty sweet accessories. And a pretty cool looking figure. These specialty turtles like Sewer Surf and Mike is one of the ones I have. Um, just tend to come with really cool accessories and just be more detailed than some of the standard figures. Uh, which makes sense. The Playmates, one, Playmates ones were as well. Anyways, we're going to get him out of the box. Be right back. All right, we got everything out of the package here. We're going to show you everything close up. And then we'll do some 360 view posing at the end for you on the little turntable. So let's take a look at the main figure first. Why not? All right, so here's the default head with a pretty fantastic mohawk. Um, that classic Donatello expression. It looks a little more aggressive and more like a snarl. Love that head piece. Love the mohawk. <laughs> a quote unquote earring. <laughs> They're just attached to his bandana. Can't ignore the chain here. This is just absolutely fantastic. Um, actual metal. Come on now, phone. Actual metal chain. Um, and a and a turtle head. It's just a like a plastic charm, just flat on the back, attached to a metal chain. And this can come off when you remove his head. Uh, looking at the jacket here, just great details. Um, really gives the appearance of a leather jacket. Silver button. I love that he still has his, his armbands on, showing his colors. Got the spiky bracelet there. 
Love the the zippers. I just thought they just they pulled that off very well. Let's say, oops, try and give you more detail, not less. Yeah, like the zippers are just very believable. It might seem like a funny thing to focus on, but there's a better view there. Let's say no, no, okay. <laughs> A little bit here. Got his Donnie belt. And this is. I'm not sure exactly what that's supposed to be. Is it supposed to be like a, a part of his belt? Or is it actually maybe supposed to be part of his pants? Like this. Looks like a bandana he's wearing under his belt. But it's pretty great. Like his open shirt gives the appearance of like a six pack. Although, of course, it's really his turtle shell. And then going on down. You got a T there. You got uh, these ripped pants, which are just great. And his shoes. Which even have treads on the bottom. Even good detail there. Um, his hands. One hand of the pair in each configuration of hands has the metal on it, which is pretty cool. And going around back. Let's just stand it back up here. I love the rip in the back of the jacket with the turtle shell. And the jacket almost seems like it can be removed, but I, it's not intended to be because this turtle shell is clearly part of the same mold as the jacket itself. But it is a rub, like a softer rubber, like something that could be removed. I don't know if you really can or not. Um, I'm not going to try because I don't see any reason to because this shell is part of the jacket, so to speak. But as you can see, I mean, it does seem like a separate article, which is good. Like it's, it makes it more believable. See so yeah, a really good detail on his jacket there. Not a lot else to see down here, the backs of his pants there. So then let's look at some accessories. Oops. Before we show you posability and everything. Uh, what better place to start than his alternate heads? Because these are pretty phenomenal. A totally different look here. Incredible spiked hair. Which, I don't know what that's supposed to be. Because he doesn't have hair. The way they did the paintwork there, it looks like it's growing out of his head. But obviously it has to be some kind of a wig. Love the tongue sticking out. And then this head... He still has the mohawk, so it's supposed to be like the same hairdo. But he's got these wild, I don't know, almost steampunkish goggles on, which are just crazy. And this wild face, look how deep his, his uh, mouth goes back there. This is a pretty wild one. So funny enough, this is the most normal head. <laughs> I don't... <clears throat> I'm kind of a plain guy, I guess. I kind of think I might leave the normal one on. But put this one on sometimes. I put this one on sometimes. Because I like them all enough to do that. But yeah, that's just totally a matter of preference there. Uh, then we got hands. We got total closed fists. We got these cool pointing ones. Which is just great, you know, for a punk rocker. So those are great. Then these just slightly less closed hands. That can still grip some things. So all together, one, two, three, four pairs of hands all together. And three heads all together. That's quite generous. Then we got this thing, which is a chain with a lock on the end of it. I, I don't know what it's for. I mean, maybe just to like have on his hand to, to whip on some bad guys. But I mean, he doesn't like grip onto it very well, but it, it'll hold there and it looks all right. I don't know if it serves another purpose. That's all I can figure out. Uh, let's see, the tuning fork here. It's actually quite cool, I think. Pretty good look there. Plastic, of course, but it looks metal. Uh, the vinyl record is simple, but a cool inclusion. You got a little light on there. Like, there's not really any... There's a little bit of texture to it, but it's not like lines like you'd see in a vinyl record, per se. It's pretty basic, but it, it's, it looks cool. It's a cool inclusion. Uh, let's see here. Uh, well, this is awesome. Um, this is bow staff, but it's also 
an instrument, obviously. Get the mouthpiece end. Let's see if we can get a little better lighting on this here. Not really. Well, I think we'll be able to get a better view of this um, when we actually have it in his hands, but it's a pretty cool piece for sure. Then we got the mic stand here. Which is pretty sweet. The microphone can be removed. It comes separate if you just wanted to be holding the mic. Um, I think I'm going to leave it in, though. It's a pretty tight fit. But it can be removed. I think it looks good like this, though. Definitely be able to get some good poses with this. Again, it's wrapped in this deep purple wrapping, which is just so sweet. Because, um, you know, it's Donatello. The same thing this is. It's looking darker on the camera than what it really is, unfortunately. It's like a deep purple. Um, and so, oh, the vinyl record has purple. And then the guitar has this purple strap. Um, which is cool. It's a very rubbery strap. Um, comes pre-applied, but you can remove it if you want to. This is a fairly chunky thing, and I like it. It's cool. So if I were to rank him compared to all the Super 7 Turtles figures I own, like not just the Turtles, but all the figures, well, his accessories are way better than the, the basic Turtles. You know, they have pretty basic accessories. Um... But even just all the Super 7 figures I own, he's in the top tier. I mean, you got two big accessories here. Those are both very nice and very useful. Um, and then this, of course, he doesn't have any regular weapons, so this kind of replaces his weapons, but it is cool. Um, he's got the vinyl record, the tuning fork, the chain, a, plenty of hands, and then three very different heads, which is just uh, pretty nice. So overall, his accessories are like top tier um among the best i think in the super seven line but we'll come back and take some look at articulation all right i'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because if you've watched my channel you already know i'm not like a master of articulation uh but i believe the most recent super seven figure i've bought if you don't count the giant android crane which is a totally different thing well i, I don't know which is the most recent but it would be one of the kind of the classic turtle line that they did. And so they're all a little older. Like none of them are brand new releases. So this was a little surprising to me. You know, this might be how Super 7 does things now, but there's definitely some key differences between Punk or Don and all the figures I own. Um, you know, the, the Turtles, Shredder, Bebop and Rocksteady, Baxter Stockman, Leatherhead, all of them, all the ones I own. Um... Flock Splinter is probably the most recent one, right? In that in that line, I have the Flock Splinter. Anyways, the things that are different, the arms are socket. See, like it goes, like you go use a little force, but then it latch it, it. What's the word for it? It ratchets. <laughs> it it locks in, locks in, locks in, all the way around 360. So that's different. The ratchet also works this way. So it gives a more sturdy, defined movement. I think that's an improvement for Super 7. I think that is an improvement overall. Um, uh, twist at the biceps. Uh, twist again at the elbows, right? Yeah, twist again right there. Then, of course, the wrist also twist. Just the regular, standard, single-jointed elbows. Um... And that was quite tight. Let's do this one. I don't usually have to apply heat to Super 7 figures, but I am, after having some issues actually with a NECA figure, I'm a little scared to force them. Um, a little hair dryer action always helps, but this one's not too bad at all. So yeah, just like a standard, almost 90 degrees. That's pretty much it for the elbow. Um, the head movement, this chain makes it a little hard, but I think the head movement's improved over the classic ones. I don't know. It's, it's certainly is easy. And, like, to get some up and down movement stuff is certainly easier than I remember it being. But, uh, let's see. Of course, the turtles themselves, they never really twist at the hips because if they have a shell, it'd be awkward. It'd be weird. Um, but, again, this is new to me. 
Oop, let me zoom out a little bit. This is new to me compared to all the other Super 7 figures I own. <laughs> um, I guess I guess that would still be considered ratchet. Yeah, ratchet uh, hips. So you can do pretty much a complete split. You know, if you wanted to come out, I mean, it's a little awkward, but he can come out and pretty much do a complete split. So obviously he can do the highest of high kicks. You know, you've got to have a stand. He's not going to stay like that without a stand, but you know, of course that looks ridiculous. Let's do something a little more realistic. Like obviously the highest of high kicks are possible um, with these new hips with a stand, you know, otherwise you're just going to hold him like that. Um, his legs do move easily. Like that's very easy to move, but I didn't notice it causing any problems. Like, um, like they're ratcheted to go out this way, but just to move this way, it's just a very easy swivel. Um, which that looseness could, you know, be a little troublesome. If you remember, you know, some of the figures I've reviewed, it didn't ruin it for me on any of them. Cause I'm probably just not as picky on articulation as some people, but there's no doubt super seven needed to tighten their hips. What they've done here is this does still feel loose, but it doesn't feel like it causes a problem for one. And then you also have the ratcheting. So I, I don't know. I feel like it works. I'm trying to see how I could, like, I don't know. I mean, like, will he stand that way? Yeah, look, like, it's not a problem. Like, the easy movement is not a problem. Let's try it on this leg, because that was the one I was noticing was very loose. Let's see. I mean, if you get him balanced. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I don't honestly know if I got any of my Super 7 figures to stand on one foot that easily. This is an improvement. I don't care what anybody says. To me, I can have fun messing around with this and not be worried about it. Um, I feel like I can put this on my shelf and it's not going to fall over 10 times until I get the perfect position. This is an improvement to me. All the knees are, let's see, a little tight. There we go. Oh, yeah, pretty much 90 degrees on the knees there. And then the feet... Well, you can already see this one. Quite a bit of movement as well. Um, oh, they do, knees do twist some as well. Yep. It's 360, in fact. The knees twist 360. And then the feet, let's see. Yeah, the feet rock back and forth. I feel like they took a page from NECA um, with the ratcheted hips, the ratcheted shoulders, uh, with the feet, um, with a lot of it. And when it comes to articulation, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, I don't see any problems with the articulation on this figure. Now, I'll try to, I'll put them in some poses when we do the 360 view. Um, but overall, right now, um, I'm just going to go and say, between the articulation and just the detail on this guy, <clears throat> this is top tier for me. Uh, I'll always have a problem with Super 7 pricing. I've heard people explain, you know, that they, first of all, are definitely a smaller company, like so much smaller than NECA, so much smaller than Playmates or Hasbro or any of them. But they still have to pay the full licensing fees, not just like with Nickelodeon, who owns the Turtles now, but with Playmates, who owns the Turtle Toys, who licenses those out. So they're paying for these licenses, and they're not printing the massive print runs that like Playmates can, for example. Um... And obviously, they're they're still going to make a profit after everybody else takes their cut. And you know what? That's true. That makes sense. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't know how else to put this, but as a consumer, that's not super my concern. At the end of the day, I just have to decide, is it worth it to me as a consumer? Um, and I'm just going to say, compared to so many of the other... Um, Super 7 Ultimates figures. This one feels more worth it to me than most because these are great accessories. Um, they really are. Great accessories. Truly useful extra heads, which is a lot of detail there. Um, good articulation. Feels sturdy. Feels stable. It is so nice to not worry about this figure falling over. That should be a pretty simple thing for an expensive action figure. But I got to say Super 7 has learned some lessons. 
Now, for those of you who've been buying every new Super 7 figure that comes out, the lessons probably feel very slow. But for me, who bought Turtles figures, most of which are, at this point, probably a couple years old, right? And then to jump to this, it's, it seems like a pretty good improvement. And the detail and everything is as good as ever. Like, they've never had a problem with the sculpting. And the paint can be a little sloppy sometimes, but on my figure, it's not. He's not sloppy. So, uh, this is this is pretty great. Um, this is a pretty cool figure. If you like what you see, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. I don't know how else to put it. I'm going to go... Whew, I'm going to go 9 out of 10 on him. And if this retailed for like 35 bucks, which is never going to happen with, with a figure that's detailed from Super 7. But if he did retail for 35 bucks, this would be 9.5 out of 10 easy. Because it is just, just about perfect. Um, the price bumps it to a 9 for me. Um, so yeah, pretty awesome. And I'm just going to do some 360 views with different accessories and things. And, and, uh, I'll thank you for checking out the cardboard cave. All right, here we are <clears throat> with this guitar. I didn't spend a long time trying to get him where he's completely playing it, but you can definitely get his hand up there. You can get his hand up there pretty good. I'm sure double jointed elbows would help even more. Um, but it works pretty well. And uh, I think that thing just looks great. Microphone stand looks great. Pretty cool look. Here he is with his pretty fantastic spot hairdo. Guitar uh, slung over his shoulder. Wearing on his back there. <clears throat> the head was very easy to pop off. I don't think that was ever really an issue with Super 7, but this was definitely easier than I remember. Popped off, popped on his hands as well. You know, I changed one of the hands out there. Holds his microphone stand very well. It will sit flat, but I kind of like that he's holding up a little bit above the ground there. I think that's a cool look. Yeah, loving how easy he interacts with his accessories. This is a different experience than I was accustomed to with Super 7, and I, I for one, appreciate it. Here's Donnie just totally losing his mind with his third head on. Um, <laughs> just going crazy with the mic stand. I got all of his other accessories out here as well. That's everything he comes with right there. Um, also, just to show you, the turtle necklace can totally come off. I got it hanging there on the end of his keytar. It can totally come off when you pop the head off. So yeah, I think this is a pretty phenomenal figure. I think you can probably decide for yourself from looking at it. This is a strong recommendation for me. If you can stomach the prices of the Super 7 Ultimates, this is one, if you're a big Turtles fan, and especially if you're a big Donnie fan, this is one that I think is pretty special. I mean, you're not going to mistake this for a, a Playmates figure or 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 even like a you know a $25 action figure. I think it's, when you count all the accessories and everything, this is clearly above that. Though Super 7 is still too expensive, I feel. This is one where it makes a little more sense than some. Um, and I just, I really have nothing bad to say about the figure itself. Um, it was fun posing him. It's fun. I'm not saying articulation is perfect. It's not. But I had fun posing him. I wasn't worried about him ever falling over. Not a single time. There was never an issue with him holding on to anything. Um... <laughs> this is kind of a silly orientation there, but, uh, and I can't say that about all my past Super 7 Turtles figures. I wish they'd figured this articulation out a lot sooner because that, this is just a much more enjoyable experience. And I'll be honest with you, this makes me, if they continue making Turtles figures like this, that speak to me, this makes me want to keep on, uh, giving them my business. Um, I thought I was kind of almost done just because I had the ones I really cared about, but, this was a fun experience, and I'm really looking forward to getting Classic Rocker Leo now. Thanks for checking out the Cardboard Cave. Please like, please comment, and um, I want to know your thoughts on this guy. Um, and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for checking out the Cardboard Cave.